All right, hello friends. Uh, this is the third video in the series about getting uh, this Harris transmitter up and running, this uh, one kilowatt 1140A transmitter, uh, and also creating an operating position for that transmitter and a 590 receiver. So um, as you can see here, the operating position is starting to come together. It's, it's just in the middle of the of the desk at the moment, so I can get I can show you both uh, the front and the back end of it. And again, if you see the numbers behaving strangely on the displays, that's just aliasing. They're not really doing it. Um, and so the operating position, I'll, I'll walk you through the components. On the bottom is the uh, RF seventy four hundred five remote that um, I uh, highlighted in the last video. Uh, the middle unit, okay, there is the RF590 HF receiver from 10 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. And on the top is a Watkins Johnson uh, pan adapter or signal monitor, as they call it, uh, which has an input, an I, uh, 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 RF input of 455 kilohertz to match the IF output of the um, Harris 590 receiver. And this will allow me to look at the band, it, not, not very wide, of course. The, the Harris receiver doesn't have the widest uh, wideband IF output. Uh, and just to, um, you know, look at uh, signals, uh, help me tune them in, uh, assuming that the, the marker is correct on this. And what you're seeing is uh, just a marker, since there's no real signal yet. What's really cool about this, these three items, they all have the nice green, blue, mostly blue, it looks on the video display. And even the, um, even the pan adapter uses a blue, green, uh, mostly blue uh, CRT tube. So they all kind of look like they go together well. I have an alternative pan adapter that I might use. Uh, I'm going to do some testing on it, see which I prefer. It's different than this. It's made, I think it's also made by Watkins Johnson, but I think it's a, a really a sub carrier receiver more uh, with a, with a, Pan, with a uh, CRT more than just a uh, pan adapter. Okay, so why are we here today? We're here to talk about um, some of the rem final, the, some of the remaining components, again, aliasing, uh, to getting this, uh, this 7, 7405, why is that happening? I do not know. The 7405 up and running. So uh, last we all met, we had gotten, and we still have gotten, the RS422 serial communication working uh, with this transmitter here and, and that's working well and but there are other components that are necessary to make this all work all function properly and so what we're looking at here is the back of this enclosure and that whole enclosure goes into this space in the operating position in the operating desk so let, let's take a look at the other things that we need here so um, what you'll see here, this serial, this uh, uh, Cat5 connection is going to the bottom unit, which is the remote. And this is the RS422 uh, communication. And you may just be able to see, I don't think you can, it says control. So uh, J, whatever J that is, J4, I think, is the serial RS422 control. And that's all it does. Uh, and that's going all the way, if I can try not to trip which is getting hard to do. It's going to the back of this, of the transmitter, uh, this little panel I created here, uh, to the RS, RS422 um, connection. But there's another thing that we need, two other things we need. One is we need to get audio from the user position, from the operating position into the transmitter. And for example, here we've got lower side band and upper side band. Uh, two auxiliary inputs, we won't necessarily deal with those at the moment. We've got to get audio uh, into, the, into the exciter, otherwise you're not gonna be transmitting very much. And the other thing is we need to get key lines, which is this item here, and I used another R, uh, um, RJ45 Cat5 type cable for key lines. Uh, and so let's look at a little more detail of what all this means. Um, okay, I'm gonna pause here, but uh, yeah, so, so uh, 
I'll show you more, but the key lines from the transmitter uh, will now go through, go to one of these two connections. These are connected in parallel, and I'll, I'll explain that a little later. Uh, but here, you have the, the audio output from the remote uh, thir for the 1310 uh, lower sideband and upper sideband, 1310 being the exciter. I probably should have labeled these 7405. And then the receiver, the 590 receiver, also has two outputs, one for lower sideband and one for upper sideband. And you'll notice I, I, uh, uh, I maintain the proper gender, the male with the pins, uh, the standard for, you, for XLR is for the males to be sending signals out and the females to receiving si signals in. And in both these cases, the exciter, the, I'm sorry, the remote is sending my audio from this operating position to the remote exciter and also output the audio upper and lower sideband from the 590 receiver. Now let's go into a little bit more, more detail on this. Okay, we're uh, back at the bench, uh, and we'll go into a little bit more detail about all this. So, here are the, um, the key lines of the exciter. So, not only does the exciter need audio, not only does it have RS-422 for the remote to control it, uh, but it also has certain key lines and important control signals. So, let's go through them. Ground, I think, is obvious. This is just some wire uh, net lists, wire lists, so I know I can trace everything through and pin numbers on an RJ45. Um, so the, the one here is, is key line out. I don't currently use that at all in, um, let's get a little more light here, in my implementation, but I thought uh, it was available and I thought I would take it. It's just a way to indicate that some key line somewhere has been asserted, whether it's local, whether it's remote. Um, again, I don't use it currently, but it, I thought while I'm in here, might as well run it. Uh, we have a, a push to talk in. That's a key line. We have the CW key line in. Um, so if you're going to do audio or you're going to do CW, when, in, when the exciter is in remote mode, as when it's used with the 7405, actually all you need is one of these. So um, I, I, let me take that back. In the exciter, without running it remotely, phone modes will only be keyed by the PTT in and CW and MCW, modulated, will only uh, be keyed with this line. Little, uh, little, you know, unfortunate to have to have two different key lines, but the good news is when the exciter is in remote mode, all you need to key is this line, one signal, and it will key for both phone modes and for CW modes. So that's very convenient, but I, I separated them out just in case, you know, uh, why not? It's The uh, wire is cheap. Then I have my uh, FSK key in. Uh, this is, again, I'm gonna probably experiment with some, uh, using some FSK, uh, you know, RIDI uh, type communications, and this is one way to do it. There are other ways. Most likely I'm gonna use AFSK, but I figured, what the heck, I'll run, I'll run the line anyway. Now the next two are very interesting. So, uh, transmit mute out. Well, what does this mean? Well, when used with a receiver, which I am doing, this signal, when, when routed to the proper connection on the, uh, on the receiver, will mute the speaker when you're transmitting. It's essentially a key line, but um, you know, a separate one designed specifically for use with muting a receiver. Uh, I will show how this, op how this functions. It's, it's very useful so you're not getting feedback uh, in your receiver when you transmit, even though the TR relay, the antenna changeover relay, uh, has switched the, uh, the, anten the antenna to the transmitter, uh, you still, of course, will get plenty of feed through. Um, even using a dummy load, you'll hear it in the receiver. So this is a very, a very useful uh, line, and I'll show how that works. And then CW side tone. So um, I'm not really a CW op, but uh, what this does is the exciter generates, I think it's a one kilohertz audio tone. And if you also feed that into the receiver, you will hear yourself key. So, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of hard to, 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 to do CW without hearing some uh, feed audio feedback of how your keying is going. Uh, and this provides it. Otherwise, with the, with the mute, you'd hear nothing in the receiver. And this uh, injects a sort of an artificial one kilohertz signal from the exciter into your receiver. All right, 
So that's the exciter side of things. Uh, so uh, this is in from so this. This going to come in from the remote unit, in from the remote unit, and into the remote unit. Well, actually, I take that back. And then these two go out to the uh, receiver. Okay. And here we have. Uh, this is the J3 transmitter audio uh, and key for the 7405 remote. And all I want to show you here is that the audio upper sideband and lower sideband are combined with the CW key out, meaning go to the transmitter. And you'll notice I also uh, marked it plus push to talk because they it's the the or they or those two inputs and send it. Uh, and then you've got some other things. So we've got one connector here, J3, that has both audio and keys. So let's take a look at how this all came about. Okay, so um, just a reminder of what we've got here. Uh, we now have a place for key lines, and I'll explain why I've got two of them. And then audio for the, to the exciter and audio uh, to, uh, from the... Um, you know, audio from the remote and audio from the receiver. So, uh, so the key lines, the, the, this RJ45 is going to come from the transmitter. And I showed you the, the key line uh, RJ45 there. And it has to go, it, it contains all these, you know, all these key line, all these key lines that we discussed before. So some of them, uh, are going to go here. This goes to the 7405 remote. So we've got some key lines and these two audio go to the 7405 remote and that takes care of the 7405 remote. This is all the, the audio and key lines. Uh, and then on this side, this is the, this is the plug for the RF590 um, and that provides... It, that sends the audio to these two uh, XLRs and just two two lines here, um, just two lines. Maybe it's three. I forget. Uh, and that is those two lines are mute and side tone. So that's kind of how we do it. Uh, this goes to the remote and um, allows the 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 remote to key the the, the exciter through here, and then this goes to the five ninety and allows it to, to mute uh, and pr produce side tone. Now, um, what I did here is I, pr pr I created two of these. One is going to go to the transmitter, or from the transmitter, or I guess to the transmitter, and the other is just an extra, uh, especially if I want to run RIDI and I want to make use of that key line of the FSK input. I'm going to need a way to do it. This will be filled, uh, and so I just patched it through in parallel so I can do other things with this. I could either, you know, have some other way to key the transmitter. Maybe I'll uh, I'll use this uh, from my uh, teletype machines with a, be able to key it. Uh, and I'll certainly I want to be able to send an FSK um, input signal. Uh, so that's all. They're just bridged together. So when this one's plugged up from the transmitter, I still have a spare port that I can uh, I can do other things with. So that's kind of it. Uh, I'll put it back together and we'll see if we can do a test. All right, so here we're going to show what happens in this uh, in this setup if you don't have the mute function enabled. So all I've got right now is I've got the transmitter. I don't know if you can see it in the corner there. It's all powered up, and a long you see the black cable coming out of the front of the exciter. It's a long microphone cable, uh, and going to my hand here. It is, I'm not using the, uh, the remote at all as the exciter. I'm not using that microphone. I'm just showing the basic setup and what happens. So here we're going to go test, 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 test. All right, so you can see here a lot of the feedback. Test, 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 test. Uh, that obviously you want to eliminate. So let's do the next thing and let's plug in the, uh, let's get the rest of this thing up and running. All right, so we're back, and we're going to give this thing a little test to see a few things. One, uh, as you can still see, the, the it is still communicating with the transmitter uh, just fine. They happen, I happen to have them on the same... Actually, I don't have them on the same frequency. <laughs> I'm slightly off frequency. Uh, let's see if we can fix that. 7850, there we go. So you see that they operate independently because they are two separate systems. Uh, 
7850 and we'll lock that in. Um, so two things, we, we still see, see the, the communication works and then we're gonna see the key, how the key works and then we're also gonna see how the mute and side tone uh, from the exciter work with the, uh, with the receiver. Okay, so let's, let's put the uh, transmitter into, it is in standby, let's put it into operate. And you can probably hear it back there. Okay, um, now, the first thing we're going to do is, let's see, um, nothing's gonna happen when I key, and I'll explain why. Well, very little's happening. Uh, what I need now to do is to plug in, which I haven't done yet, this into the key line, into one of the key line uh, jacks. Okay, so again, to review what we have here, we've got one cable going to the RS-422 communication to the exciter. Um, this cable provides the key lines, which goes through this blue cord here, focus, uh, and into here, key lines and audio. Uh, we're not uh, sending any audio yet to the transmitter. Uh, that'll be the next, uh, probably the next part of this discussion. Yeah, I just put a little more light on in the shack, so uh, hopefully you can get a, it'll focus better and work better. All right, so, you know, uh, we've just introduced this new key lines concept, and let's see what happens. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, we don't want MCW. We want, um, we'll do l lower side band. All right, it's using, uh, well, we're not, we don't have no audio, but we're just going to use this for key, and we'll try and see what happens. Now, you remember last time we did, there was a lot of feedback on the um, receiver. Now, let's see what happens. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. This is a test, W2HX test. So as you can hear, it mutes the receiver. It can make it louder, make it really obvious. Test, test, one, two, three, four, test. One, two, three, four, one, two. Well, we're not really transmitting. Uh, there's no audio. Okay, and so now let's also, um, let's see what happens. So, so that's very important. So we now have uh, the TR relay working. We have the remote uh, communicating with the, with the transmitter back there. And we have the receiver uh, properly muting. And then the last thing to, to, to sample is this CW side tone. And let's see how that works. So we're gonna put the transmitter into CW mode. And I've got this little key here, plugged into the CW, and let's listen to the receiver. All right, well, clearly I've got to work some things out here. I don't know. So I don't think it really matters uh, what the setting here is. Yeah, so that that sound actually is 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 not from the receiver receiving; it's from this signal being uh, injected through the key lines from the exciter uh, to the to the receiver. And when the receiver uh, uh, has that that line asserted, it knows to prove uh, to reproduce that side tone from the exciter. All right, so. Uh, that's, let me turn off the, the amplifier and we'll turn off the speaker. So as you can see, we're getting closer to a fully functioning station. The last component of this is going to be routing the audio and I'll give you a little preview. Uh, again, so the audio for the remote comes here, the audio out for the receiver goes here. We'll talk about that later. And all of that will eventually go into uh, the audio inputs here. I don't know why I can't, the yeah, audio inputs here. Uh, and to do that, we're gonna use some cables we got on eBay, which are, again, very, very inexpensive, surprisingly inexpensive, uh, where one side, uh, well, I've got a different, what is the wrong snakes to show you? Uh, one side is male and the other side is, uh, is female. Uh, and uh, 
And to give you also a little preview of the next video, I'm going to show you this audio uh, switching system, which I use in the shack, uh, which I'm uh, going to be doing a major overhaul on. This is going to help me route audio to various receivers, transmitters, terminal units for RIDI, uh, computers uh, for data, etc. Well, well that's, that's another video. Um, but that's it for today. Uh, I know this is kind of a long one, but uh, there's a lot to cover, and I hope you aren't too bored. Uh, please leave comments below if you think I'm going into too much detail, not enough detail, boring, etc. And do please subscribe. Thanks.